I see the themes, I see his dreams, I see the devil and all of his schemes. I see the lies that betray the creator, the father, the son, and the rest of his team. I see the media spreading his lies. I see so many are bending the knee. I see the grace and the mercy of God. I see the light of the world as it beams. I see the sin, I see the man, I see the wounds in the palm of his hand. I see the sacrifice that he made for us. Jesus fell so we could stand. I see the plan, it has begun. I see the damage that Satan has done. I see the serpent just putting in work, and I see that he just can't compare to the sun. I see the lust, I see the hate, I see the money that people have made. I see the greed and all that it brings. I see the time that it tested my faith. I see the pain, I see the loss. I see my savior just hang from a cross. I see the money I spent just to flex. Thought I was a boss. I see the waste, I see the pride. I see the fear in society's eyes. Searching for leaders so they can mislead us. I see all the times that we fail when we try. I see the children are being abused. See them ignored, it's not on the news. I see the island, I see the plane. I see the laws that they will not explain. I see the names, we know who they are. I see the fame, they don't follow the cross. I see confusion, I see them flaws. I see illusions, I see them lost. I see addiction, I see the struggle. I see a God that don't want you to suffer. I see the team, I see the huddle. I see your burden, but I see you tougher. I see the wars, I see the tanks. I I see corruption and I see the banks. I see the families pulling the strings. All of our rulers that have been paid. I see the ballots. I see the game. I see your followers. I see your aim. I see the fakeness. I see the shame. I see the fire and I see the flame. I see the weapons. I see the death. I see the heavens and all that is left. I see the angels. I see the clouds. I see that God is not messing around. I see it's Sodom. I see Gomorrah. I see America. All of its boredom. I see the phones. I see the screens. I see the porn and the guilt that it brings. I see the president. Seen his appointments. I seen the church and I see disappointment. I see the pope. I see the priest i want to see hope but i see the beast i see the booze i see the drugs i see commercials that come from the plug i see consumers i see the chug i see the suits but i see a thug i see the charts i see the debt i see the printing and i see the fed i see the trillions of dollars and all of the commas they dump on the top of our heads i see ukraine i see the east see politicians are having a feast i see the homeless i see them hungry i see the tents are now lining the streets i see the farmer i see the fields i see the drought i see the yield i see the lesson i see the teacher looking for modern disciples to lead us i see the feed I see the ladies, I see abortion and I see the babies I see the demons try to enslave us I pray to Jesus, he will come save us I see the jury, I see the plaintiff I see the circus, I see entertainment I see distractions they're putting in places I see the deals while they're making arrangements I see the crown, I see the thorns I saw them play for his robe that was torn I see the tongue is as sharp as a sword Ready to battle and fight for the Lord I see the father, I see the son I see that Jesus has only begun I see the faithful, wait till he comes He will not stop until he is one I see the saints, I see the war See principalities prowling the world I see their loss, I see his game, but in the end they're proclaiming his name. I see forgiveness, I see the way, I see that he wants us to pray. Need to confess for the sin we commit, need to repent, need to obey. I see the grace, I see the mercy, I see the Lord comfort all who are hurting. I see the truth, I see the light, I see the Lord and all of his might. Ooh, how about them apples? Welcome back to The Pulse, folks. It is 11.04. That was the latest track called Revelations from Freddie Quotes. Freddie Quotes dropping the mic on us. And it's so cool. I uh, got a chance to visit with Freddie about that track and just uh, his explanation of how that was just such a gift given to him. Right. Like he, he was like downloaded. And it's so cool because, you know, I, I think about what real art is. It's one of these things where it's like you stand back and you watch its creation. And a lot of what we do on this stream, right side up, what Steve says, is really just having this conversation. And there are moments in our conversations that just surprise me. I have revelation as we literally speak, and it's so cool. So today, on the 23rd episode of Right Side Up with Steve Sags, we are going to continue our conversation about this kingdom economic thing, right, which is so jam-packed with so much Um but let's also bring in Steve and say hello to you because he likes to say hello to you too. Hmm. Welcome, Steve. What's up, Steve-o? Hey, man. How you guys doing? Howdy, howdy, howdy. We're back yeah. again, number 23. It is, um, it's, it's so great to be with you. And of course, you know, you and I talk outside of this and it's, it's, it's getting fun, Steve. Not that it hasn't been, but it's getting really exciting, isn't it? <laughs> yes, every bit. You bet. <laughs> Every bit. Well, the last time we did this, right, uh, episode 22 on September 22nd, had a great impact, right? The second hour, we talked about the slide, um, yeah. and we're going to continue that today. I want to say hello to some folks here, and then we'll jump into it. We're going to commit this whole time to um, to this this slide, this transfer concept, and we're going to really dig into this. And 
you're going to hear, uh, you know, really, I think some exciting things. This to me now I'm realizing for crypto folks at this time is such a perfect time to hear this. Um, yeah. Sam Kemp is here. He's number one. Good morning, all. And Mike Ostell. Mike, I'm glad that you're here. Having some setbacks the last few days, but I always get a huge lift from you folks. God bless you. What do you say to Mike? Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, He's one of a kind. That's all there is to it. He's yeah. he's the real deal. Yeah. Thanks for being here, Mike. I appreciate you being being here. And Sam, of course, if it wasn't for Sam or it wasn't for you, I guess we wouldn't all be connected. So we're here with you and we're we're pulling for you and just glad that we're friends. And then this guy, this guy, the OG of all OGs, Kinetics is in the house. Here with my notebook, ready to take notes. How about that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Ready to go. And you met Kinetics at the Gen Con. Yes. He was, he was yes. there. Yes. And, then you, and, and wasn't he at the original meetup as well? Um, think, no. No? For no, some no, reason, I was thinking... No. Uh, he was In Dallas? To... No. Kinetics wasn't no. there at that one. Um, okay. Yeah, probably some other handsome guy, I, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all pretty handsome. That's, that's sure. right. And then, yeah. of course, this guy, your buddy, your SoCal buddy, your hippie yeah. SoCal buddy, Cadium. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Katie and I were talking uh, earlier in the week, and he was talking about Kinetics as well. So I guess they're good. They're yes. good pals. Yeah. Kinetics is a he's a hub of a wheel, and yeah. it's a good one. He's a, he's a connector for so many different people. So great to have you here, Katium. Um, yeah, Mike, setbacks are merely a setup for a comeback. Amen to that. We're, we're cheering for you. And then David Lee, all the way from southwestern Indiana, he shared with me yesterday a miraculous story of provision in his family that is wonderful. And so, David Lee, great to have you here. He's been doing all kinds of travel and, and things with family. Um, and then Tank Crypto, who's really the ultimate reason you and I met, I mean, yeah. through Carter. Uh, Second Corinthians. So, you know, the time uh, to write the ballast getting right side up. Let's go, Steve. Heartbeat. Awesome. Tank. Thanks for being here. Um, let's see who else. Taryn, what's up? I'll see you folks yeah, on the replay. Hey, thanks for checking in. Appreciate you so much. All right, Steve. So yeah. I'm going to pull up the slide and I'm going to like wind you up and say, go. <laughs> um, so as a, as a, uh, as a preview. So the second hour of the 22nd episode, we talked about the transfer and this is what, when we use the terms left and right hand side of the slide, this is what we're referring to. And I'll be honest with you, Steve, when you first shared with it, I often joke with you that I came into this book in like chapter 15 and it was like, <laughs> this is my introduction to you when I first met you. And I was like, I might be like brain hurt and I didn't know what to do. But now that I understand this, I'm like, just so thankful that, you have been willing to be patient with me and with others to, to understand there's so much wrapped up in this and I'm just so thankful for it. So the floor is yours, man. Well, cool. I mean, you know, that, uh, gosh, that's the, that's the way Jesus is with us. I mean, I'll tell you a little, uh, a little side note before we, before we get into this, um, I think I've mentioned on previous streams where uh, Jesus had me contact a gentleman who um, ministers and has done so for, you know, a couple of decades in, in D.C. And what he does is he befriends and ministers to, you know, to congressmen and women um, in D.C. And, um, and so he's you know, he's done this, you know, done this for years. And, um, okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do something that's a little unusual. I'm going to stop here because the good Lord is saying, okay, leave that for another time. Let's get yep. back into the slide. Awesome. So, so if you don't mind, we're going to, we're going to do that. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> okay. do it. Okay. Okay. This It'll is the real time. time. This is real time this, in the presence with Jesus right here. This, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, but we'll get back to that story at another time. Okay. Let's go. Let's get into this. And I'll kind of, I'll kind of review a little bit to kind of get us picked up from where we left off. Um, and 
And then for the new folks, it'll give them, give them a little bit of a, a preview of what we've been talking about, but I'll also add some, um, some other elements in it. So it's, you know, not a complete um, res uh, reciting of last, of last, last week's. When you take a look at this, um, this slide, uh, what you see in its simplicity is the system that God built in order to administer the creation. Um, Satan didn't create any of this. He has just hijacked it. And so when you hear uh, what is perhaps the most famous of all verses, you know, quoted that you see at virtually every um, sporting event is John 3.16, right? Um, for God so loved the world that he gave, this is the translation, gave his only begotten son that whosoever, you know, believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the way it's translated. Um, what we, what we don't pay attention to, and if you were to talk to anybody on this stream or anywhere else who's had any kind of church background, they'll tell you a pretty common interpretation of what that means, that verse means. And yet the verse doesn't say anything, anything like what we are told it means. It doesn't say any of that. It begins with, for God so loved the world. Well, when we think of world, what we are taught is we first think that that's people. But guess what? There is a word, a word, for people. So if you hold that the that the New Testament, like the Old Testament, as we refer to them, is inspired, then, then, then God didn't give the word people, for God so loved the people. He gave the word that we translate world. That word it is cosmos. K-O-S-M-O-S, -O from which we get our English word, cosmos, C-O-M-O-S, that is, you know, the universe. The word cosmos um, is a word that means um, ordered system and arrangement in its most, um, in it's applied oftentimes to refer to the ornamentation of something. So the, the ordered system and arrangement then produces an, ornamenta an ornamentation that tells you what that system is producing. Now, we see that um, most clearly in a fruit tree or as you've talked about so often, you know, the kernels of corn. See, the kernels of corn produce out of it a cosmos. And that cosmos is an ordered system and arrangement that produces the ornamentation of a stock, uh, corn stock, that inside that then has a multiplication of what what uh, began it in the form of the, the kernels that were planted. So the point is, is that now, for God so loved the cosmos, the ordered system and arrangement that he created to administer his creation, that he gave his, and then it, then the translation is only begotten son. But that word that we translate only begotten, what it really is talking about is a son of a one of a kind son, a son of a particular unique class. Now, what's interesting is that Jesus did not say, for God so loved the cosmos that he sent me. Who did he send? His son. Well, who did Jesus then come to 
propagate many sons. So the ordered creation, the ordered uh, system and arrangement that God created in order to administer the creation, he has given it, given his son who works in, uh, in coordination with him to produce all the ornamentation that that system is designed to produce, which is called life. Wow. Okay. Now, what does that have to do with this slide? This slide is not about two different systems. It's about the same system operated in two different ways. And in the way that that system is operated, it produces an order. And that order then is what produces its ornamentation. Can I say so back the, to you? Yes. Let, let me just say this back to you just to make sure I've got it right. Because you just packed a ton into John 3.16 there that I think is like, <laughs> what an intro. So what I hear you saying is, because we talk about the, the sonship and we, yeah. we talk about the adoption as sons. And we talk about the son of man. We talk about, yeah, how much of this, the birthright, this idea of being in the class, this Elohim class, being created in his image and conforming to his likeness. And it, it's so much more powerful if you were to say what you just said. God so loved the cosmos that he sent his one and only unique son. And that's when you think about that, he's like, no, I sent you, Steve. Yes. I yes. sent you, Matt. I sent you, yes. David Lee. Yes, yes. Because yes. you yes. are my son made in my image. And in a way, you think about this. What did he say? He's in the line of Melchizedek. He is the first. Yes. He didn't say he's the only. Right. He's the first. And what's so neat about that is because you said it like the first time we ever met, we've forgotten who we are. Yes. And I just wanted to put an exclamation point on that because it's such a big idea to say so many people. I was talking to Ray earlier and I said, it seems like everywhere you go, everyone's going to tell you who you like, what you can't do yeah. and criticize you and make you feel inferior and make you compare. And you yeah. feel like you feel inferior. And of course, the system of the world of, yeah, you're just the descendant of a monkey and billions of billions of years. And it's this constant barrage of you're nobody. Yes. And what you're saying here is, hold on, if we really look into the, the depths of these words, God so loved this ordered system that he sent you. Yes. But you are one of him, meaning Jesus is the first, and you, like the son who went and he financed your debauchery, you get to come back to him. And in his nature and character, you can lead and rule over this ordered system. Yes. That's it, Matt. Now, for you, what is, what is your particular assignment within this ordered system? Well, the articulatable one outside of yeah. being a father and a husband and all that is to unlock global generosity by giving. Okay. Now, why is, does he use those particular words? Unlock. Yeah. Why, is, why did he use unlock? Because it's locked. Okay. On what side of the slide is it locked? It's locked on the left-hand side. Now, why is it locked? You see? Now, yes. once you go, oh, it's locked. Well, Jesus, why is it locked? And, oh, to unlock global generosity. Okay, how do I do that? If it's locked, aren't there a keys? Well, Steve, didn't I tell you that, that to you, those who have called out from the old left side of the slide and out to me, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. The, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what happened when in, in Mark chapter four, when you told the, the agricultural story and everybody took off and said, yep, I'm going to get up at five 30 tomorrow instead of six 30. And I'm going to do all these things so that God can bless me so I can do the right kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have more. Thank you, Jesus, for the reminder. Great lesson. And, they, and the multitude walked off. But a few chased him down and said, okay, dude, 
I've been around you long enough. I know you got something up your sleeve. <laughs> you didn't just tell us, give us an agricultural lesson. What did you have in mind? And ah, because, because you fall. Yes. I'm going to give to you the mysteries of the kingdom. Wow. And those are going to unlock things that you have not even envisioned or imagined about the ordered system and arrangement, my cosmos that I have created in order to administer all that I have. Think of the incentive that's, wow, is right. Think about the incentive that's built into this. You know, it's, it's so amazing that what would be the benefit of following Jesus? Yeah. Right. And you think you just made that illustration. It just hits me. I imagine the people that are like, hold on a second. This can't be everything. This can't be it. And they're like, no, no, no. We're going to go chase after him. And I think about us. Right. And I think about this idea of what you talk about, about interest. Yeah. It's like, hold on a second. That can't be everything. You know, and you chase after him. He goes, yep. And Michael, I was talking to Michael earlier and he said, um, you know, my dog can hear things that I can't hear. And, you know, it's so and so simple, but in some respects, you think about this, the reality of real reality, right? Yeah. The Jesus reality, this reality, we know we can't perceive all that there is. Right. And to think that there would be one who says, no, if you seek me, I will tell you, I will unlock these things for you. And that actually real life is in that process of you pursuing and walking with me and following me. And the, there are mysteries that unlock, but they're packed with incentive. Yes. The real way and truth in life that you seek. And that's the thing that is, anyway, I, I, I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but thank you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm loving it. Oh, well, that, that's why we do this. Once again, folks are getting a chance to see what our typical conversations look yes. like. So yes. it's, it's okay. Um, and so, you know, you talk quite often about, you know, what, what Jesus has asked you to do with him, the role that you're to play within the system, all of which is based on the foundation of your role within the family, which is where you get to practice all of this in a very intimate way. And you've also in our private conversations have talked about the effect and impact that, you know, just, okay, Jesus, what about this? And him, you know, uh, speaking something to you in a way that you could understand it and the transformative effect that it has. Yeah. Well, when he does that, he's moving you from the left side of the slide to the right side of the slide. He's moving you from all the scarcity of blessing and benefit that you're con being confronted with and showing, unlocking the blessing and benefit that occurs on, in his realm. And simply because you have inquired and done what he's asked you to do, he transitions you right into the right side of the slide. It's all the same system. It's the order that is different within the, two, within the system and how the system is operating. And that order is, is a function of the nature and character that is operating it and controlling it. So when we look at this slide, we're not looking at two different systems. We're looking at the same system operated in a different order that is based on a different um, nature and character. Okay? And so... Um, we see that same kind of picture uh, in the garden that we've talked about so often. What did, what did Jehovah put in the middle of the garden? Two trees. Okay. One tree was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The other tree was the tree of life. And he said, hey, listen. Don't eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's going gonna, it's gonna to promise you that it's going to give you all the answers you need to be able to do the things I've asked you to do. Don't believe it. It's lying to you. Don't eat from that tree. 
My suggestion is you eat from not only you eat from every other tree that's in the garden, it's including the tree of life. The tree of life will give you everything that you need to support you, the spiritual part of you, which is where you really need to see and understand. And the other trees of the garden will support your physical being so that your machine can actually perform what I've asked you to do so that you produce life. If you choose the the tree of knowledge and good and evil, that tree is going to deliver to you death. That's what it produces. If you eat from the right tree, from the tree of of life, it will produce for you life. That's exactly what's happening on this on this slide. On the left side of the slide, that slide operates under the under the tree of knowledge of good and evil. On the right side of the slide, it operates on life. Now, what's fascinating about all of that is we're constantly wanting to know what it is that we need to do and what the right answers are and where to go and how to get there and all of those things, what's coming up so I can prepare. You know, you had a fabulous, you know, uh, stream with uh, Axis. What is it? Axis Live. Yeah, Axis Alive. Yeah. Yeah. Axis Alive. And he's showing you all the charts and all the encouragement. What's he talking about? He's talking about what's ha- what's ahead and in the future. Well, what's fascinating is that the, that there is this little statement that John made in John 1 that said the word, okay, which comes out of the one who speaks. Uh, the word was God. Uh, uh, the word was with God yeah. and became God. And it said this word was life. Oh, tree of life. And this life was the light of men. It illumined everything you need to know. So if you don't know what to do, ah, don't try to figure it out. Stay on the right side of the slide and say, Jesus, what's up with this? What word do you, you know, you deliver to me that will provide me your life so that that life then produces the light that I need to do what you've asked me to do with you? So what are we doing here? We're connecting some of the dots of what this, how this system was designed to function um, so that we can accomplish the Father's vision, which is to rule his creation with him in the fullness of his, fullness of his nature and character. Okay? So that's what this slide is. This slide is a picture of the same system created by Jehovah when he, when he built the creation in order to administer his creation. And now the matter of choice comes in as to how you're going to operate within that system. The choice is to operate on the left-hand side of the slide, which is rooted in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's data-based. Give me more data. Give me more information. The more information I get, the, the better decision I can make. And that decision will help me position myself for greater advantage. The only thing is when I get advantage, the way I get advantage is by taking it from somebody else. Oh, that's the wealth extraction system. That's how it functions. On the other side of the slide, it says, no, don't do that. Continue to talk with me, speak with me. I'll tell you everything that you need to know. I'll show you how to operate in my kingdom. And when you do that, what will happen is we will produce wealth together. All that you need will be provided. And in the provision for what you need, others will be provided for as well. There will be an an unbridled circulation and multiplication of wealth. Wow. That's a different way of looking at things. So you know, that's what the different differences between these two sides of the slide. And then we'll go to the top part of it after your comment. Yeah, there's you know this this has been commented about in our community so often. You know, Richard Hart 
will mention, he'll say, you know, don't trade, right? That's kind of this, hey, don't trade. Why? If you think about the left-hand side of the slide and what you just said, if you think about what trading actually is, trading is you sitting on one side of a screen taking from someone on the other side because in trading, someone has to lose for you to win. And it's such a like a real like black and white picture of the left-hand side. It's like, I'm going to use manipulation and I'm going to use my, my ability to manipulate the market to wick down and to get you stopped out or you know whatever it is to manipulate and draw you off sides because in order for me to win, you have to lose. And I think about it, I love to play poker. And I sit at a table and you know I look at it, I don't see it as gambling as much as I see it as stealing from people. It's taking, <laughs> it's outwitting them and taking because yeah. someone has to lose at that table for you to win. Yeah. And it's like this system on this side is is in the essence of the trader. And it's yeah. cool that the word, the name is that you're a trader. You're trading this, but you have to take it from someone. And I think that that's so interesting about the you know agricultural model of if you partner with the very nature and character of the creation, of God's creation, its production, its ornamentation is abundant. Yes. Versus... Hey, there's not enough to go around, and I'm gonna have to steal it from you. Anyway, that's my commentary. Well, no, that that is right. Now, there is. So here's here's a little you know, a little addition to that. Remember, the system is the same. Neutral. It's how it's how it is operated. So trading on the left side of the slide, because it's built on scarcity, can only produce one outcome, which is one benefits, one loses. Or at least that's the attitude that is, that is in play. Um, I mean, how many times have you been in business? How many times do you get in a negotiating environment and you want to do a deal and each party thinks, you know, what happens? One party wants to get more, more money than what it's worth. And the other party wants to get it for less than what it's worth. Yep. And so the idea is that both parties hammer it out, negotiate, do all the things that they're going to do until they decide, okay, how much of what I wanted to gain am I willing to get up, give up in order to get some of what I either want or need? See, so it's a competitive kind of thing. So trading in the left side of the, of, the, of the screen, because that order is based on scarcity and wealth extraction, that's the nature of trade. But remember, there's also a trade on the right side. And what does that trade do? Well, it's based on the, on the business principle of the kingdom, which is, the business is about reciprocating relationships where there's a mutual exchange of value. Take either one of those components out of the trade and you don't have good business. What you have is the left side of the slide, exploitation, extraction. So in, you know, in the right side, there's trade as well. Isn't that what, what Jesus said in Luke 19, yep. you know, with the minus? Go and do business with this trade, See, and produce wealth, manage wisely until I return. Well, guess what? On the, on the left side of the slide, managing wisely means I get more from somebody else. On the right side of the slide, it means I keep circulating what Jesus has given so that everybody can benefit from the circulation and the production of that resource that has been given to me. Now that's a little bit more of a, than what we intended in the review, but the most important part is this is the same system. Satan didn't build it, built, build it. God built it. Satan hijacked it, turned it into a scarcity wealth extraction system because he is trying to control those, all the wealth production for his own purpose and benefit. The right side of the slide 
is the same system just operated with a different nature and character that produces another order. And that order is based on a wealth production system. It, it blesses and benefits um, in an almost in, immeasurable uh, quantity. So that's what the slide looks like. Now, in this particular conversation, we're talking about, you know, money, wealth, and wealth producers. But it's virtually applies to everything, just as we mentioned a little bit ago, with, um, you know, in the family environment. Same dynamic works. Same system at work. Um, and so the thing to remember there, and here again, is the common part of this, of the system. All wealth is a product of human labor. You remove human labor, you have no ability to produce wealth. And so guess what happens on the left side of the slide? The left side of the slide tries to then uh, convert the wealth producers into servants, slaves, that are designed to work, exert their labor in order to produce wealth of which they do get almost none of it. They get the cost of wealth, they don't get the wealth they produce. And we'll, we'll show a slide that kind of illustrates, illustrates that too. On the right side of the slide, there is an intention because of the nature of it there is always a sharing of that wealth so more wealth can be produced. There's no intention to pool wealth on the right side of the slide the way that there is on the left side of the slide. So that this slide in, and I, I know between us and some other folks that I know, we have learned to, to, to talk in terms of left side, right side of the slide when we're talking about a business opportunity or an issue that says, how do we, you know, what is it that we're actually doing here? How do we get that wealth from the left side to the right side of the slide? Okay. So, so let me, let me ask you this, and this is just the practical nature. I like to think about this because I'm, I'm practicing this, Steve, yeah. and yeah. I don't know that I've got it down, you know, I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm a pro. I'm a pro. <laughs> so I want to, I want to describe how I see this playing itself out in a practical way, you know, okay. at a very simple level, this idea of considering others in addition to yourself. Right. So there's this kind of this, this, this first kind of approach that I look at this, you know, we were talking about um, today, just a, a business conversation about meeting new people. Right. And when you meet new people, you know, the, the scriptures talk about who is a person of peace. And you think about who you choose as your partners before you even get into the business conversation is understanding, all right, you know, there's a lot of um, axioms. One that I believe is really powerful is people support what they help to create. Yeah. And this idea that when you see yourself as collaborative and you consider others in addition to yourself, well, you're not going into it from a perspective of, extraction you're you're coming into it with an understanding that hey this, this has mutual benefit and i think that you know that's not you know something that's you know purely reserved to um i mean i think there are a lot of people who like that idea the, the whole win-win concept and yeah. the fact that a nobel prize was given to john nash for this concept is crazy to me but um that that starting point but i think what's really interesting is there's an element of this that we talk in terms of wealth and we talk in terms of kind of money, you know, even the slide, right? The transfer. And I think when I first heard this, Steve, I was like, yeah, I want to know about how the money's coming to me, man. Like, oh, tell me about that more of that, Steve. I need some more of that stuff. And what I've come to understand of all of this stuff is actually the more you understand this right-hand side of the slide, the less actually the, the money itself matters. Yeah. And it's right. strange because here's the, not to not to cut to the chase, but the transfer is actually within you. That's what I'm seeing. The transfer yeah. isn't the transfer of wealth from one to another. It's actually the transfer is in my own understanding of who owns the wealth. Yeah. And if you recognize that, okay, 
I'm here temporarily. And I am because it, it, it's I feel like a lot of it is tied to this idea of considering others in addition to yourself. Right. And that's something that definitely is supported by the scriptures is each of you look not only to your own interests, but all to, also to the interests of others. And that's why I love this community in crypto so much yeah. is because I feel like, yeah, like, you know, people, they want, you know, they want their bags to grow, if you will. But it's not in at the expense of someone else. It's like, hey, let's win together. How does it? How does that look? And I think that's very at a high level what this community is, is kind of part of the ethos of it, even if they don't can't articulate it. But it feels like there's something way greater that's happening here in this real what we consider the kingdom come. You know, this what, what does it really look like to do this? And you've mentioned many times that you know, this this could happen, this transfer of God's man could happen over a month's period, right? This idea of going, hold on. But there's something deeply in this that you keep coming back to every time, which is, why don't you ask him yourself? And it's interesting that the transfer, if you will, in the right-hand slide is actually firmly rooted in your listening to Jesus himself. Right versus just an attitude of yeah, let's have win-win. There's something in this at the core that is literally saying, no. If you, I, 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 I have work for you to do. You have a role. You have a purpose, and there's an abundance in following me. No, that's a, that is exactly right. The why did Jesus say, "I do nothing apart from the Father"? Why did he say that? I don't go anywhere unless he sends me. I don't speak unless he tells me what to say. I don't work unless I see him working. For I do all things that please my father. Well, why did he say that? We kind of talked about it last week. Did, did Jesus appear to be in any way constipated in the way he lived his life? Did he feel, did he, did he, appear to be all jammed up and loaded down and, you know, no, he was incredibly free. He was fluid. The way he described himself to Nicodemus and others like him as like the wind. You don't know where I'm coming. You don't know where I'm going. But let me tell you what, when I show up, I'm impacting things. Yeah. You know. That's how, that's how it works. So yeah, the first transfer is the transfer of the individual. And the nature of the transfer is to no longer decide on their own, but then to listen to and uh, decide and choose with Jesus. It's from the Lone Ranger, if you will. We hear a lot about Lone Ranger, so I'll kind of use, you know, terms that are you know, paint a picture. It's from the Lone Ranger that operates independently on his own to the right side of the slide, which is operating in partnership. It, that's how he designed it to work. So yes, the very first transfer is the transfer of the person where they leave on the left side of the slide the uh, liberty to choose on their own, independent from God or anyone else, and then transfer to the right side where now they're exercising their liberty to choose to do nothing apart from him and to so, do all things with them in partnership. That's the first transfer. So it would seem like if I were to kind of use the uh, a mathematical equation, the left-hand side feels like kind of a one-to-one -one and the right hand side seems like the 1600 to one of the corn, right? Like this idea that, hold on, imagine two people or imagine two people that are in community and relationship, a business deal, whatever it may be, seeking, right? Jesus in this yeah. process saying, all right, Lord, you're, we're following you. If those things be the will, right? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You think, well, this is actually in accordance with his purpose and plan, and it's done in his nature and character. Well, what is the ornamentation of his nature and character? What is the ornamentation of his cosmos and of his man, 
but one of abundance and blessing and protection. And to yeah. think that, could I walk into this engagement with you in a way that says, not my will be done, but yours. And in some cases, it's counterintuitive. Like, that's what I think is so beautiful. It's like when the boy gives all that he has, you're like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? He's like, why? Well, I, I don't know. I just know that Jesus is capable. I'm following him. I'm giving him all that I have. And it's like, well, you only have five loaves and two fish. That can't feed all of these people. Aha. You don't know what I have appointed for this. And that's the thing I think is this big kind of leap that people, you just, but once you get a taste of it, Steve, once you literally offer that up and you say, all right, not mine, but your will, and you literally listen and follow, you see it's not like he's trying to make you suffer. It's like, no, you don't realize, but in that letting go of this is you coming in alignment with the creation, which is by nature, character, design, construct, abundant in nature. And that we see it, but we don't, I think sometimes we're, we're, we're lied to that, well, I can't, we can't have anything nice, Steve. Hey, we're trained. Uh, we're trained in the order on the left side of the slide. That's all there is to it. That's why there's a necessity for a transfer. Yeah. See, I mean, the, the left side of the slide wants wealth to be produced. It just wants to pool it so it can control it so that it can accomplish its objectives. That. And because it's, it's built on a basis of scarcity in the midst of a system that produces abundance, it has to create an illusion of scarcity. I mean, do you have the slide that's right after this? This is a little bit ahead. I don't, um, I don't. I only have this one pulled out. I'll, I'll find it though. You keep going. Yeah, um, because it, there are all kinds of pictures that show this. Um, but it's, th that's the nature of it. See, we are, we only know about scarcity and the system that makes money, the prize of life. Everybody is chasing after something that promises to give them things when it's lying to them. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I, while you're looking at that, I remember when I, you know, first made it to the major leagues. I was in Anaheim Stadium. I think I've shared this before. From the time I was two years old, that's where I wanted to be. I was doing my pregame warm-ups, you know. I was doing my early sprints, you know, from uh, the left field line into center field and um, and stuff, and I would finish one of my, my pregame sprints and I was standing out there and looking at this beautiful stadium with the people filling up. And, and I just said this thing. I said, wow, is this all there is? Is this it? Is this it? This is what I wanted to do since I was two. Hmm. And I thought, wow, I, I thought it would be a whole lot better than this. And to, Millions of people, I had reached the pinnacle of what they would consider to be the greatest thing in the world. But once I got there, it was, wow, this isn't anything like what I thought it was going to be. Well, that's what money does. Now, does that mean that baseball wasn't a worthy uh, endeavor, that baseball didn't provide value, that baseball wasn't a blessing in itself? No, it's just that it promised me something that my mind interpreted, but it didn't deliver on the goods. That's what money does. See, it promises us something that once we get it, it doesn't deliver the goods. Why? Because the order doesn't tolerate that. I mean, think about this. We talk about Bezos, okay? Yeah. Doggone it. Dude. How much money do you really need? Really? You, 
you're worth nearly $100 billion or whatever it is, $120 billion, how much money do you need? Well, he says, I got plenty. Well, then what are you doing with all those other billions? See, what is happening that then, well, in his mind, the way he's trained, and I'm not uh, casting stones or disparaging him at all. I'm just speaking of what the way the left side of the slide uses the system. It produces well, uh, pools of wealth so that those pools of wealth can be called upon when, when necessary. And guess what ends up happening? The wealth producers have to, have to consider, hmm, how am I going to pay? Am I going to have enough check at the end to cover all the bills of the month? What's going to happen here? Or if I get to save some, I get to save a little bit of money. I mean, I, I saw an article the other day about you know, um, folks that had $5 million, you know, what was it like to have $5 million in, in the retirement account? And it said that 0.01% of the workers have that amount of wealth stored up by the time they retire. 0.01%, one-tenth of 1% have that. That's what the left side of the slide does. That's what it produces. So don't want to beat a dead horse um, on this thing, but that's, that's what happens. That's the left side of the slide taking the same system, hijacking it in such a way that it produces scarcity and the illusion of scarcity by creating pools of wealth so that it can keep the wealth producers working and needing to work in order to survive. And if they can improve their cost, their standard of living in the process, so be it. As long as they don't get the benefit of the wealth that they produce. Well, and there's no better illustration than that video I sent you the other day. So a friend of mine went into the Philippines and he was meeting with the indigenous people. Yes. Right. on. And he, he did this interview and he shared this video with me that I shared with you and I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll summarize it for everyone. So there's indigenous people in the Philippines and these are the natives, right? Like this is the native group that goes all the way back and they have, the government has allowed them to have their region, right? Almost kind of like reservations, but, but different. And there are, you know, chiefs and there are people who are in, in charge and there's some, some honoring of that in, in this area. Well, they are sitting on amazing natural resources. There's tremendous amounts of gold, copper, nickel, you know, it's a beautiful area. And so their traditions and their beliefs are that this is the gift that, you know, God given them the gift of this land. And they have a deep connection to it. And they're very, this is um, not modern in any respect. And what's interesting is in this specific situation, the Chinese have come in and because of the unsophisticated nature of this indigenous group, have made a deal with them. And the, the deal that they said that they would do with them is, hey, we will give you 1% of production. And just in of this, in and of itself, the one percent is, you know, seems like not much. But the problem is, you know, this man is standing outside of his home that's basically falling down, right? Barely has a home. He's the chief in charge of signing the documents for the Chinese, and he said they pull a hundred million dollars worth of metals out of our land monthly. They said they would give us 1%, which would be a million dollars U.S. a month. For the last five years, we've gotten the equivalent of $200 per year. So think that's about that, it. just as an illustration. No, that's it. And, and why? Because they can. This group of people is weak, not unsophisticated, and doesn't have any guns. 
were the Chinese. And think about this. You know, you've said this many times that the, the systems are neutral. Yes. And you have this choice. And so what is this lie on this side? And, you know, Bezos or whatever it is, because I want to make it sure it's extremely clear. I'm not an advocate for communism. No. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is this... One of the things that's amazing about God's nature and character is this idea of justice, which is a, this concept of fairness. And what does it mean in valuing each other, right? Just even considering others in addition to yourself. You know, I think if you asked 100 people, is it right to not honor a deal? They would say, no, of course not. But the very structure of the deal, all of the things that are a part of how the Chinese company has engaged with the indigenous people of the Philippines is intentionally to not honor your agreement because you have no strength to force us to honor it. Yeah. And this is just one illustration of, a, of, of so many, but we see this in poor leadership in a company. We see this in a poor leadership of a family. We see this over and over and over again. And I see this in crypto in spades. Yeah. Is that, you know, what do we, what do we see when Lambo, right? Because, you know, I, I think of the Andrew Tate followers, right? The people are like, get out there and muscle it, man. Be a man. What does it mean to be a man? And of course, you know, obviously what is a man is and what is a woman is a big question these days. Yeah. But we're getting this kind of secular left-hand side of the slide definition of it, which is, okay, you know, if you're a real man, your, your, your card, your report card is, you know, it, it, it's got to have a bank account of this size or you're nobody. Yeah. And that's really kind of the thing. If you're, you know, you're the guy who has the women and the money and all this stuff and it's perpetuating and training people to say, yeah, get whatever you can at all costs because this is the best it's going to get. There's nothing after this. So go after it and get yours and let the world, because that's what the promise is. And of course, it goes right back to when Jesus was there and Satan tempted him. He said, turn these stones into bread. Yeah, He's like, it, it's so obvious, but so amazing that it's the same lie. Every time. Basically, yeah. I'll offer, I'll trade you this thing that you think is going to bring you life. And what did you say? I'm standing here in the stadium. Is this all there is? Yeah. And you go, Wow. And I, I've heard this so many times. Tom Brady was a perfect example of this. They asked him after what his fir fifth Super Bowl. He's like, I just, I just got to get the next one, you know. And it's like no peace whatsoever. And you go, obviously, peace doesn't come from amassing, you know, money in an account. I do recognize that resources are are helpful and and, and they're needed to be able to to administer this life. But there's a better way, and it's more abundant, and it's um. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how this illustration, this slide, gives. I, f I feel like it gives me kind of handles to grab onto. It, like, it's a, it's a great example. I, I now have some language around this to say, okay, left-hand side, right-hand slide. You know, it's like it's helpful as a, as a tool. Well, yeah. I mean, one of, the, one of the lies, and we talk about the left side of the slide, you know, being built on a lie, okay? We call it the lie. Well, one of the great lies, one of the misdirections, the deception is to take the resource and make the resource the bad guy. Yeah. So now all of a sudden, money becomes the bad guy. Yep. How is money the bad guy? You know, the money is neutral. I mean, let's, let's give an example of, you know, kind of the story you told of how you know, the, uh, the people in the Philippines are, are being exploited. There's a perfect, ex, you know, picture of the wealth extraction system working. Okay. On the left-hand side of the slide, what has to happen is, the, is that the wealth has to be pushed into a repository that can then recirculate that wealth according to the intentions and purpose of the one controlling that order, which in this illustration is mammon or Satan. Okay. That's what we talked about. No matter how we get away, how we try to deal with this, 
this macro situation is too great for a single human mind to try to organize and control. So there is something bigger at work and at play than what we understand. We can see the ornamentation and the effect. We don't know how in the world it's actually operating and producing to create that effect but it's obviously coordinated. Well, where is that coordination coming from? It's coming from a spirit, what we would call a spiritual source that's essentially moving the pieces of the, uh, 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 on the chessboard to accomplish its, its intention. Um, so how would this look to then get from the left side of the slide to the right side of the slide? Because remember, the repos wealth repositories are represented in, in you know, people, businesses, and institutions. That's where, where the wealth is, you know, is, uh, is pooled. The one thing that you have on the left is you have wealth. You have resources. They are there. See, that's where they are being controlled. Well... Somebody on the right, on the left side says, hey, I want, I want to make the break. I want to transition from the left side to the right side. I want to transfer from this mess on the left to this what is right on the, on the right side. And I have all of these resources that have been entrusted to me. What do I do with those? Well, one of the ways they say, hey, listen, I'm those folks over in uh, over in the Philippines. Okay, guys, what do you think about this? What we will do is we will build an economic system, an economic order, and this order is going to be built on cryptocurrency. We're actually going to use cryptocurrency as currency. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a billion dollars out of the left side. We're going to stick it on the right side. And what we're going to do is we're going to partner with, the, with those people in the Philippines to, to build wealth a wealth production community out of them. Well, guess what you've just done? That's a concept. Okay, Jesus, where did that concept come from? Is that your idea? Yes, it is my idea. Okay, Jesus, how do we do that? Now we got the macro concept. How do we do that? Here's how we do that. See, I've already built the infrastructure for you. In this instance, from Richard Hart and that deal, I've already built the infrastructure for you. Now you just have to learn how to operate with me on that right side of this, with, of this slide with the ex express intention of building a wealth production community. And what will happen is whatever investment has been made will, will pale in comparison to the wealth that it produces as a result when you unlock generosity. What is the, now we're going back to what, what the Lord has said to you. Unlock global generosity. Okay, it's locked. Huh, how did it get locked? Well, left side of the slide is telling you how to do that, how that happened. Okay, what are the keys to unlock that? Learn to do nothing apart from me. When you learn, when you do that, I'll show you how to take and unlock that lock, which will then unlock what? Generosity. Why is it necessary for generosity to function? Generosity, according to my order, places no hold or handle on wealth. It keeps it moving. It does not claim it for its own. Isn't that what the story of the uh, parable of the, you know, of the uh, prodigal son was? Yep. Did the, did the father hold on to his wealth? No. Nope. No. He released his wealth to his son. And when he released his wealth to his son, his son he was financing his sons in your term earlier, his debauchery. Well, what was the payoff, the fruit, the ornamentation that came out of that? He saw his father's nature and character compared 
and what was available in his house compared to the slop he was eating. He said, wow, the ornamentation of the left hand of the slide that I've been operated on got me into eating slop. I think I'm going to go back to the right side of the slide where my father is, where he released his resource to me. And when he released his resource to me, it actually brought me to the very revelation and understanding of who he is. Wow, I'm going back to him. And he went back to him, and what did he get in return? Ah, his father running out to greet, to greet him and meet him, put a robe of royalty on him, stuck a, fing, a ring on his finger, and said, now, learn to operate in my authority. You saw what it was to operate in power. Now, learn to operate in my authority with me as my son. That's the transfer. That's what it looks like. Transfer the person and all that the person is and all that they have and all they will ever be will be transferred along with them. And let's do that. Jesus shows how to take cryptocurrency and build wealth producing communities out of that. Yeah. Do it one community at a time. You know, wow. it's amazing. Yeah, it's a wow. And you know what? So I think I think a lot of people inherently see this like they they're, they're seeing the edges of this. That's why I think a number of people this is really resonating with. It certainly is with me is that just like how God works in general is it's multifaceted, right? Yeah. You come to it from one perspective, right? You're like, wow, this is kind of asymmetric, man. Wow. I saw what Bitcoin did. Wow. You know, 69 million or whatever thousand percent or X. And then, well, yeah. And then 14,000 X with Ethereum, you know, 8% isn't X's. That's a percentage. So this is unusual. So we're in this unusual time. I think, and this 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 may be worth having you know a little commentary around is that we're seeing that the system is failing right and over time you know we we used to be on a gold standard and not to say that that was the end all be all but we ended up pushing further and further away from um, things that were tied to you know some some form of stability now here we are you know, fractional reserve banking. But if you look back into history, at the core of this is the sovereign debt of nations never gets repaid. And if you look at kind of the rise and fall of empires, it's really ultimately based on sovereign debt, is that they basically spend themselves out of existence and then there's a war and somebody takes you over and takes your stuff. And it's interesting that that's that repetition of this left-hand side of the slide of extraction, which ultimately ends up in killing and pillaging, right? Yeah. It ultimately is like, all right, we'll just raise this to the ground and we'll pick up the, the gold bars and we'll restart. And let me ask you this. It feels like this is extremely relevant right now because it seems like not that we're making the transfer happen, but that the transfer is happening. Yes. And that it feels like the time of that we live in. And you said many times, do not add energy to the left-hand side. You use the peach analogy of like, it's rotting. You see it's rotting. Don't try to save it. Yeah. And, you know, I often will say, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. But here's the really amazing thing is that God's provision in the midst of it's crumbling. It's, it's still there. He's always provided for his people. And I think that it's an amazing, I think it's a really interesting call because what if I could, you know, it's like gaining the whole world and losing your soul, right? It's like yeah. this warning. It's like, hold on, no, gain your soul and, and not care about the whole world in, in the sense of its physical nature, but to say this transfer of the man is ultimately... A, a proper alignment to the very order, rank, structure, nature, character of creation. And when you align yourself with that, you experience its abundant ornamentation. And I love that picture of fruit, right? It's like the fruit ornamenting. And you think about what the fruit represents, but it's this concentrated abundance value and it comes with it. 
the yeah. seed of the future, right? In the apple is the orchard. Yes. And it's so amazing that who do you want to be? You know, who do you want to be? The extractor or somebody that propagates this system of abundance? And it's a beautiful thing, but it's so crazy because the reason I know that it's God's design is because it's packed with so many other implications. It's not just, here's how you get rich. No, 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 no. This is how real life and light and all of these things is experienced. The peace that transcends all understanding, the straight path, all of these things. And it comes down to the simplicity that you said ultimately comes like breathing is to say, I do nothing apart from the Father. And I only consume words that come directly out of his mouth, right? That's how I live. And, you know, we've often said, try to emphasize, this is not some religious thing. We're not asking people to get saved or be Christians or do any of that stuff. Like, no, there is one who created it all, and you can align yourself with that system. And this is such a great picture of it, Steve. And I wanted to also offer to you, I have the slides now. Is there another one you want me to pull up? Because I, I have that presentation. Yeah, I think the one that's after it, well, the next one, I think they went after this one. Yeah, here, the one just before that one. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here, here is an ex an, an example. J just by way of being helping to visualize what what this would these kinds of things would look like. So this is the character operating through the system example. Okay. So remember we were talking about this is the same system. It is now being operated by different nature and characters to produce an order that has an outcome, an ornamentation. One is scarcity that is a built on wealth extraction. The other is abundance, which is wealth production. So in the wealth extraction system, the scarcity model, um, $200 billion in cash. Total employee, employees, the employees are the wealth producers, 155,000 of them. Percent of distribution of the wealth to the employees, zero. Okay. Total cash distribution to wealth producers, zero. Distribution share per wealth producer, zero. That's the typical model, economic model that operates on the left-hand side of the slide. So let's look at a wealth production system, an abundance model. Still same cash on hand, $200 billion. Total employees, that's the wealth producers, 155,000. So let's say, hey, let's, let's have an abundance of, of wealth, unlocking global generosity. We're no longer going to be scarcity driven. We are abundance driven. We're no, no longer seizing control over wealth. We are sharing wealth, see? And that sharing of wealth is an expression of generosity that keeps all of the wealth production flowing, okay? So they're gonna say, hey, let's give them 25% of the wealth that has been accumulated in the form of cash. That would be a total distribution of $50 billion. That would distribute per wealth producer $322,500. And how much remaining cash on hand? $150 billion. Hmm. Now think about the 155,000 wealth producers, what would happen with the $322,500 of shared wealth that they would benefit and be blessed by because they're the ones who produced it. What would happen then with that $322,500? What are they gonna do with that? they're gonna push it right back into the system because they're built on, a, on an abundance, generosity model. We're not looking to hoard and lord, I think is the way that you describe it. What we're looking to do is to produce wealth 
And out of that wealth production, what we're going to do is we're looking to produce more wealth producers. Inside each one of those wealth producers, each one of those is like an apple. And there's an orchard of wealth production that's waiting to happen with each person. Now, what do you think is going to happen? You know, if this kind of thing occurs, you know, there's this, there's this fascinating analysis that you can, that you can do that the current GDP and world GDP is about $106 trillion. The U.S. produces about $25 trillion of that. If you brought the rest of the world simply in, up to the production standard of, of the American worker, that would inject another $400 trillion into the world economy. I think I shared a little bit of that with you early on in our, yep. in our relationship. Well, what in the world do you think that would do? Would that be an example of unlocking generosity? Because the whole attitude and nature of generosity is to give. Because in the giving, guess what? When you give the seed to the soil, what does the soil do to you? Do to do back to you? Produces it says, it says, thank you very much. That's why the left-hand side of the slide is, is a perverse, atrophied ornament of what God's system is designed to produce. And so, hey, what are you wanting to do? It's a simple matter. Just say, hey, Lord, I want to make the I want to make the transition. I want to make the transfer. I want to learn how to do nothing apart from you, to listen with you, to partner with you, to learn how to live with you in your system, in the way you've designed creation to function. Well, we've said it probably a hundred times in these streams. Well, why don't we try doing that for a while? You know, let's quit feeding this, this nonsense on the left side and stand up and say, okay, what resources do we have? What is it that the Lord has entrusted to us? What, and you and I have talked about this off camera and some of the other things. And just as you start talking about it, all of a sudden, all kinds of stuff starts showing up, right? Yep. It's not like you have to go out there and contrive it. Right. You, you, don't, you don't have to make stuff happen. It is ready to happen. And that's a really, you know, I think an interesting caveat, right? You give, these are great examples, right? And a great model to give you this idea to understand its, its structure. You know, you, you think about the one application of this, um, and oh, my, my computer just went, went nuts. Um, you gave one example of, right. Hey, what if you were to take 25% of this and you were just distributed? So that's an example, right? Yeah. You know, I want to make sure it's clear. It's not, that's not a, um, a recommendation. No. It's an illustration. Yeah. And, and I think that it's important to note this. I think what's really amazing is, is I was on with Axis Alive yesterday, right? And it was the coolest thing because it's like he read my mail. Yeah. And it was so cool to run into somebody who he, he, he approaches things differently than I do, but he sees things very similarly. And it was so cool to hear him go, yep, 100%. And it was like, there, there are brothers in arms here who are going, you know what? I do see the fact that this money is attracting people, but what is the real value that's being passed along, right? We're here because, yeah, the number goes up. This is, you know, unusual time. And in this left-hand side of the slide, I might be able to get mine. But it's like every great story, right? A man goes out to get something he wants, and then the process discovers something greater in, in the process. And it's like this story, this narrative that God is telling, his story, which becomes history, is this beautiful story of a journey of 
a realignment of what you actually want. And it's like a, a, this constant like education of, wow, okay, okay. And it's interesting that, you know, the younger people, and I was the same way, is like, I don't have any need for this Christian BS. I don't have any need for this stuff because it's been represented as hokey or phony. And it's partly because people have said, look at me, listen to my words, not listen to Jesus himself. And I think what's so powerful about, you know, these streams and this, this is, is, you know, you illustrated this with the, the story of Paul in Macedonia, right? The spirit of the Lord said this and the spirit of Jesus said this, and they find themselves in Macedonia and a spirit of Apollo, of, of, of Python yeah. is saying, Hey, these are the bond servants of the most high God and basically telling you they're here to save. And you're like, no, you have to rebuke this. If you listen to Jesus, I don't know what the percentage is going to be. If you listen to Jesus, I don't know what it's going to be. But I'm going to tell you this. It's, it's likely greater than anything Steve and I could ever possibly articulate or fathom. Is right. that the, the complexity, and, and you and I are seeing this in real time. I call you and I'm jumping out of my shoes going, like, Literally, Jesus has been speaking to people halfway across the world for 10 years. Yeah. The same thing he's been speaking to me. And then tying it together with things that they could never have known and how beautiful it is. He's like weaving together this tapestry of intricate you know, detail. And you're like, wow. And I'm reminded, it, it, you know, I use the term with you privately that I feel like I've walked into a different room. Yeah. It's like I'm in one room. And remember... um. It was the Wizard of Oz, right? Where it was black and white. And when yeah. they went into it, it was like technicolor, right? It became yeah. colorized. And you're like, hold on, this is all new. And of course, John said that the streets were like paved with gold. And, you know, imagine going from this point of gray and upside down and scarce and rotting and, you know, stinking to this understanding of hold on a second it's wow it's beautiful and it's abundant and it is peaceful and it is and you know it's it just i keep coming back to this steve it feels it feels like one a journey but also somewhat of a refinement or test that you know if the father in the prodigal son story, if the father knew, which I, I, I assume he knew when his son came to him and said, Hey, give me my inheritance. He knew that your son's going to have to learn on his own because I can't tell him. And he doesn't recognize my nature and character right now. And to think that this is a, a picture of who God is to us. He's like, this is something you have to learn on your own. And I feel like in this life, the people who, who I see going, I don't know which way is up, you know? And it's interesting. I didn't see him for who he is. I see him each day more and more, but I didn't really see him for who he was until I had exhausted all of my own, what I thought of my own capabilities. Yeah. You know, I had to get to the, basically I had to get to the bottom in order to actually look up. And, you know what I, I I get so stunned by because it's so it's so beautiful, it's so multifaceted, is that when I think of this concept of the transfer, in its you know, in its it's tantalizing in its like attraction. You're attracted to it. You're like, well, tell me about this transfer, man. I've heard that this mm -hmm. transfer is gonna be good. I want to be a part of the transfer. And then you go, Oh, so what you're saying is this transfer isn't one that just implicates my bank account. This transfer transfers everything. Everything. Every relationship, every interaction, your bank account, plus everything you have. And to think that, well, and you said this, and man, I'm so thankful for you, Steve, because you've opened my eyes to this idea that you, you said it from the very beginning. You said, 
why did he create in the first place? Like, what was the whole purpose of creation in the first place? And to think he wrapped it up when they said, hey, how do we pray, Jesus? And he said, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This holy one that we call on, it's like, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to think that in our hands and in our decision-making process of Elohim man, that we literally could transfer this place to one of kingdom, which is more like heaven yeah. here. Yeah. And, and, and I think there's a lot of people in this world who think that heaven is a far off place that is not here. It's not present. It's not reality. And to think that a God would continue to pursue us and be patient with us as we learn these things. Um, do you think, I mean, this is the, the whole plan, isn't it? That it would become, you know, I think about starting in a garden and finishing in a city. He will finish this work, won't he? Well, that's, that's the test of the divine. The test of the divine is the ability to accomplish the decree without deviation, you know, without deviation. That that's what it is. See, one of the what <laughs> I mean. See, we think about just another example. See, we've been taught that what you and I are talking about is um, is fantasy. Right. Oh, you can't have heaven on earth. Well, wait a minute. What has America been to the majority of the rest of the world? Why have they been trying to, to, to risk life, limb, and family to get from where they live to just having a hope of getting into America? Why? Because America is heaven on earth to the majority of the planet. Now, it's, being, it's rotting because its government is, is operating so perversely and abundantly, if you will, on the left side of the slide that this nation that has been one nation under God is now becoming one nation under mammon. And all of the ornamentation of that is being displayed. And yet still people flock to this country because this country, America, is heaven on earth to the rest of the world. So the issue is not a philosophical issue. The issue is one of choice. You know, there's this when you ask the question about, you know, he said he'll do it, won't he do it? Well, one of the things that we are trained is we're trained in this idea of prophecy, foretelling the future. Well, let me ask you something. When, and for anybody who's watching who has done this, have you ever put together a business plan? Have you ever said the things that you intend to accomplish um, with your business, that your business plan is articulating the things you're intending to accomplish? Do you call that prophesying? No, planning. Do you call it, do you call it you know, foretelling the future? No, you just say, here's our plan, here's what we're going to do, and we're gonna dedicate our resources, our time, our energy, and all that we are to accomplishing this outcome. It's part of your plan. So there's this huge debate in, inside, you know, the spiritual realm of Christianity about whether it's whether um, it's really prophecy of God can really foretell the future. He's not foretelling the future. He's just telling you what his game plan is. And the difference is he can actually pull it off. <laughs> you know? So when we read these things, like the transfer, you know, that's Revelation 11.15, you know, in concert with Acts, you know, 1.7. 
You know, Jesus told the disciples, the times and the seasons are not for you to know, but they have been set by my father's own authority. Huh. See? He said this. By the way, I don't even know what that is. Jesus is telling this is set by my father's authority. He is the one who is in control of these levers. After all, it's his plan. Right? And then Revelation eleven fifteen, it talks about, you know, the seventh angel being released to sound his trumpet and the declaration that the kingdom of the world is becoming the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And he will rule forever and ever. And the elders, the Elohim, the heavenly Elohim, the elders bowed down, cast their crown before him and said, thank God that you have finally risen and laid and aggressively laid hold, laid hold of your power to reign. Well, what does that mean? The time has come. And so you and I talk about all the time. Wow, it's happening. It is actually happening. We're not talking some philosophical idea or concept. We're actually observing it occur. I have an, I've had an observation then. You know, I was looking at what Sam Kemp was writing in the chat. And, you know, I think that there's, there's an interesting thing that's happening when it comes to, you know, politics of left and right and all of these kind of things. And there's a, there's a nuance in of this that I, I feel I constantly am having to remind myself. I think about this idea of removing the plank from my own eye before I, you know, re you remove the speck from yours. Yeah. And I think about this judgment and I think about this, you know, you wrote in the 1960s white paper, you know, how a lot of this stuff potentially began. I, I look into the scriptures over and over again, these cycles of him giving them over to their desires, right? And people yeah. constantly forgetting, right? And returning, you know, and the cycle continues. And I look at it and I think a lot of the plan of the the left-hand side, right? Not only just mammon, but just Satan's plan is one of pitting you against another, right? Yeah. And I, I often will think of, you know, if there's a car crash out in front of your house, you don't run out and ask who they voted for, right? <laughs> you, you, you go out and you help. Yeah. And I think about this idea, well, what is at the core of this listening to Jesus transfer kind of thing? What's the, where's the rubber meet the road? And a lot of the rubber meets the road on this recognizing the value of his Elohim man, right? And recognizing your, you know, I'm a big fan of independence and freedom, but I'm also a big fan of recognizing that he's intended it for it to happen and work together. You know, I just see in my own family, the differences of skill sets and temperaments and abilities and perspectives just in my home, much yeah. less in a business or in society. And then you think about this idea, well, what if great people like great men like Sam Kemp, right? or whoever it is, yeah. what if you were in charge? What if you were in charge? And you've said this to me many times. And you understand that these things are tools and these things are neutral. And that if you had the decision-making process, would you destroy your enemy, right? Because yeah. you know, I think a lot of times we, we look at it and we're like, well, we need the, the red guys to get in. And if the mm -hmm. red guys get in, they'll destroy the blue guys. And everyone always overplays their hand and we're back into the cycle again and the pendulum swings. Yeah. And this is actually breaking that model. I see, I see it breaking that model and saying, no, no, you know, in a way the transfer is of the man. And when the man is transferred and all that he has goes with him, he animates the tools, not out of his own strength and power, but in the nature and character of the one he's listening to. Yes. And you think about this, what is Jesus saying? He's like, I love you. I made you. And you, you know, it almost changes the very nature of that, you know, because I I'm a big fan. Like, I want to protect life. I, you know, I've got political views, social views, I got all these things. But as I think about them, I go, hold on, I've got to check them against this, you know, I, and, and that's you know, it comes back to the core lie. 
that core lie is that Jesus is dead. Yeah. And you know what? Like I, I ever, when I strip all the stuff back, Steve, I am reminded and I get reminded it at church that this historic Jesus fellow was a great guy. And on Easter Sunday morning, we look to each other and say, he is risen. But I'll tell you what, uh, you know, the rest of the 364 days, he is a historic, dusty, crusty, old Jew. And he's not alive and he, and he doesn't speak. Now, I do see, you know, those that are out there who are literally saying, no, no, he speak. I walk with him and talk with him and he is actually a friend of mine i i've he's alive and he speaks and it's interesting what seems so obvious that everyone should accept is true is the proof that it is what it is is that it is so um it's it's the it's this stumbling block for people it has become this lie that, and, and to think that it's controversial that you would say, hey, by the way, Jesus is alive and he speaks. Why don't you ask him? Like that that's controversial in Christendom. Yeah. And I think if you gave, either, people would give it lip service, but they do not want it to happen in practice. And I don't mean they, they themselves, but the, the systems that have been created do not want to support the idea that Steve can make decisions on his own by talking directly to Jesus. But if you look at what he said, this is the whole reason he came to fulfill this law, that literally you would have direct access. And it's like, how could we, obviously I know the answer to like, how could we have gotten it so wrong? But it's what perpetuates all of these things. And I think what an amazing thing if that you said one community at a time or one individual at a time, is transferred into this and you think about all right what is your influence i played the the video of um freddie quotes freddie quotes his revelation at the beginning you know what can i do steve well freddie quotes did something yep he had some courage to say you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna seek him and he's and what does he say i see i see i see why because it was spoken to him by a living yeah. jesus and you go you know what let's animate these things and that's why i love crypto in this community so much because i see in it the hope beyond america hope the oh, yeah. hope of actually people seeing the nature and character of the one who created this system in the picture of this abundance that so many people have experienced and I think it's a that I think it's a gift. I really do. I think de decentralized finance. I think this whole Richard Hart ecosystem, and it's not Richard Hart as God. It's it's literally no. He's showing us a picture, and we're seeing it in real time. The ornamentation of this creation that it is fruit and it's abundance, and it and it's like we people need to understand this, and to see someone like Axis alive s go, oh yeah, yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm like yeah. what. Yep. That gives me a lot of hope. Well, yeah. Well, think about okay. Now let's kind of tie some of the um, some of these concepts together. Um, we're talking about left side of the side, right side of the slide. Okay. First question: On earth as it is in heaven, um, is there anybody in heaven? Can you imagine anybody in heaven pooling resources? There would be no need to. Why not? Because, yeah, I mean, it, there's there's no need. There's no lack, I suppose. It is the perfect expression of the abundance model. Yeah. It is a wealth production system operating without deviation in heaven. So is there anybody out there scrambling for money? Is there anybody out there hoarding? Is there anybody, is any of that happening? See, and so we sit back and we look, huh, I wonder if what's going on up there. I wonder if anybody's wondering if they're going to be able to pay their bills. You know, I wonder if, if guys are sitting down there and they're looking at a project that Jesus has given. I wonder if they're trying to jockey for position. What, I wonder what's going on. No, 
there is so much that who's who's worried about that? Well, didn't we get a picture of that with Solomon? Yeah. That it was there was so much wealth in Israel that there were coins on the ground just laying there. There was so much wealth and abundance. Well, okay. So now we take give you a little give a little illustration of 155,000 employees, wealth producers. Oh, you can't do that. Business just can't do that. Do you realize that businesses have to have enough operating capital in there to well, yeah. And in that particular business, they could operate for about five years if they didn't never sold a single product. Yeah, on their 150 billion in cash. That's exactly right. So what is it that's stopping this? Okay, so let's say that that occurs. Now, what would you do with your $322,500? What would you do with that money? How would you use that? Would you go to Jesus and say, Jesus, man, I'd like to kind of participate in that system because there's all kinds of things that I think you have are leading me to do that I don't have the resources to do them. But wow, what would I do, Jesus, if you gave me $322,000? And not just once, but every year you share though some of the wealth that we produce together, you shared back to me a portion of that wealth. Wow, what a novel concept. Well, guess what? Isn't that what you're talking about with your, you know, with your hex and your, you know, Tex and your, you know, Ophir mm -hmm. and all of that? Isn't that what you're talking about? Aren't you yeah. talking about being at the bottom and, hey, this thing is ready to go, you know, into bull. In fact, I think you were talking with uh, yesterday about it's already, the bull is already Mm -hmm. Been let out of the barn, and this thing is going. In October, you're thinking about certain things happening, and you have the having, and you know, I mean, well, you could be one of those that ends up with a three hundred and twenty-two thousand five hundred dollar check in your bank. In your bank, what are you going to do with that? Well, the thing I'm I'm suggesting is consider the transfer. Yeah, just yeah. simply consider it. Jesus, what about this transfer thing that this guy's talking about? I know when I look in that, that the prophecy teaching, the end time teaching I've been taught is that supposed to happen, you know, way in the future. This guy's talking about it happening right now. Well, Jesus, what do you say about that? Yeah. Should I be giving some attention to this? Is this something I should be paying attention to? Is yeah. this something that I should be paying attention to and then let Jesus answer it. Yeah. You know, what's amazing is you've brought this up before and I don't have it at the tip of my tongue. So you could probably illustrate it, but you know, I think about Israel saying we need a King, yeah. you know, and they're like, well, everybody else got a King. We need a King. And he's like, well, you know, and of course, you know, the model that God had set up actually was the right model and then you talked about, I don't think it was the Levitical model, but you talked about this model of, hey, people bringing into the storehouse, right? And then if a, if a, if a um, stranger or an alien came through, they could have access. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I also look at kind of this Shemitah and I look at the, the um, forgiveness of debts and this resetting, and then, you know, just fields fallow, and, you know, this idea of the cycles, and, you know, we've gotten away from that because it's like, oh, we need a king. There is a picture of that model that was given or gifted to God's people, and they said, no, we're going to take this left-hand side of the slide model. Um, you know, you illustrate it with this idea of what, it's profit sharing, like, if you're a wealth producer, what's so great about the blockchain? And what I love about it is it's not communism. It's not UBI. It is not universal basic income. No. It is, no, you have equal opportunity with someone else. You actually have to put a piece of yourself into it. And I, I really value that. It, it seems right to me that there is a relationship 
just like you have a relationship with God, the more you seek him, right? The more this is crab walking that you do, the more you see and understand him. The same thing to be true with the systems of abundance is that, hey, there's a direct relationship to your effort and an investment. But the problem is in this current left-hand side of the slide, the system is set up to enslave you with the system. Whereas yeah. if the system actually's infrastructure is set up in a way that is fair, and you have an equal footing, whether whether you're the CEO of BlackRock or not, it's an immutable contract. And Steve and Matt have the same opportunity. Now, they may have different resources and a different ability to invest, but there's nothing about the system itself that can be corrupted from the outside because it's immutable and it is decentralized. And so, you know, for those who have ears to hear, and it's very similar to like, in a way to the gospel, it's like, well, you can know about it. Hey, I know that Bitcoin exists. I know that Hex exists. I know that Texan exists. That doesn't mean I will have any. It doesn't mean I've staked and have T-shares. And it's one of these things where it's really built on the back of your ability to choose. And, you know, you think, well, what is wisdom, right? Uh, well, I want to I make wise choices. Well, what if we... What if we teamed up together? And that's the thing that I've always been enamored with, with the Pulse Chain, is I see so many of these people that I know that if the, let's say at some point in the future, PLS was a dollar, the amount of wealth that is in the hands of non-war um, power people, meaning not nation states and pooled where they could literally fire weapons at each other, the decentralization of that money, it's just like you said about that 322500 bucks. What happens when the wealth producers actually have, you know, a piece of the action? Well, they're probably, if they are transferred, if you will, are going to lead and rule in his nature and character. And it's like, wow, so heaven on earth can come. I mean, in a, in a literal sense, because his man makes that choice. It's so... Mm -hmm so crazy well think about i mean okay we're talking concepts here and and one of the ways that that jesus uses me is to be a vision caster you know to cast vision to say okay look at that look at what's out here let's just pause for a minute and think about this and just take a step back and observe what is it that we are seeing when we simply observe. Well, okay, for the Christian community, um, there is this verse that says that God is that the kingdoms of the world are going to be transferred to the kingdom of God. Where do the kingdom of the worlds operate right now? Where do left -hand they operate? Side. Okay, they operate on the left hand side. What dimension do they operate in? The physical. The physical dimension. So he's talking about earthly kingdoms. Yep. Those earthly kingdoms right now are operating under what? Under on the left hand side, under the influence and control of other spiritual forces. Right. Okay. So now he's saying that kingdom is going to be transferred to the kingdom of God, to be ruled by his by his Christ, by his son. Okay. Who's he going to transfer those kingdoms to? Because that kingdom of the world is now comprised of billions of little kingdoms. Okay, think about it in terms of businesses, nations, businesses, institutions, things of that nature. Okay, so who's he going to transfer them to? He's going to transfer them to the kingdom. So these are earthly kings and kingdoms that are being transferred. Who's he going to transfer those assets to to be administered on behalf of the kingdom of God? Who's he going to transfer them to? Well, gee whiz, if you if you are a business that was going to acquire another business, you know that the financial benefit, the economics is what creates your interest. But the heavy lifting, lifting is in merging those two businesses to function as a, as a unit. So there's 
the majority of the of the effort is not in creating the financing or putting together the deal. It's actually making these two separate entities work together. Okay. So you evaluate the management structure, you evaluate the manager, you, do, you look at how the organization is, is, uh, is structured and organized and you say, okay, who are the people there that are operating in a manner that's consistent with how we're operating here? Isn't that what we do? Yeah. Okay, so what's Jesus doing? I got assets I've got to transfer to people to manage with me on behalf of our kingdom so that the will of my father can be accomplished. Who out there is interested in doing that? Oh, my gosh. Anybody interested in learning how to run business and life with me to accomplish my father's will? Anybody out there interested in that? Wow. You know, Steve, like this is a... Revelation 21, 22. Okay. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of earth will bring their splendor into it. And one of the things that when I read that, I, I'm reminded the kings of earth. Okay. You, you just said the physical, right? Yeah. These are the kings of earth. These are not the kings of earth in what you think of them today. Yeah. Because, you know, you think about who comes into the kingdom, yeah. you know, and there's a lot that, you know, kind of specifies weeds and wheat and sheep and goats and, and the like. But if you think about this, this is a picture of that, that future. You know, there's no temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple, right? It's like, okay, no lights needed. He is the lamp. And the nations will walk by its light, right? And you think about this, it's like, yeah, we listen to him and we follow him and we walk by his light. And the kings of earth will bring their splendor into it. That suggests to me that those are the transfer, yeah. that those kings of earth, that, you know, the meek will inherit the earth. I think about this group of people that are not the current kings. Have splendor they bring with them. Yeah. And if you think about that, you know, whether you're storing up those treasures in heaven, if you will, or this idea that there must be a transfer. This is evidence to me, Steve. There has to be a transfer for the new kings of earth to bring their splendor into it. Yes. Yes. Your your uh, audio is out. You're you're on mute, Steve. Yeah, you hit the mute button. You must have been saying something really important. Either either your uh, Bluetooth went out, or it looks like your it, it shows you as um, bottom left. It'll say mute. Click that. So yeah, that'll. It must have come unconnected to either that or the. But if you go to the mute button, or I'm sorry, to the settings button. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, folks, this is, um, we're, we're going to be wrapping up here in a second, partly because it's homecoming weekend at the school and the kids are doing some big presentation. And my wife's like, you ought to come on over and check out the kids. And I'm going to do that. Steve, this has been incredible. Are you are you not going to be able to connect audio? No. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Out of out of battery. You know what? The spiritual forces are at work trying to shut Steve up. Steve, it's so good to see you. Thanks so much for this time. It happened at the right time, though. We were wrapping up these things, so thank you so much. I'll catch you here in a second. I'm gonna get. I'll give you a call, folks. Thanks for joining again today. It's interesting, like the tone of things and how the tone of things changes as we kind of weave our way through this. And it's like, you're seeing in real time, the kind of things that we experience kind of, and that's why we wanted to do this, right? It's like, what does this kind of conversation look like? Because it's very unlike, Hey, go sit down and listen to a preacher preach. That's not it. It's like this idea of we're, we're wrestling with these things and it's like real time revelation. You're like, okay, what does this look like? And, you know, 
I haven't shared with you guys actual details of what's happening kind of day to day with me and with our team, but we're seeing miraculous things and just a reinforcement that this is true. And I've said to you many, many times, I wouldn't be, you know, allocating an entire day, right, of stream time on a crypto channel to talk about these things if I didn't believe that there was value here for you in some way. And to me, you know, God himself said, listen to Steve. And it's been one of the most, this is probably the greatest year of spiritual development for me. And it's so reinforced because it's aligned with the very creation, right? And what is the, what is the, what did Steve say? The ornamentation, what is the result of this, but fruit. And what is that fruit? It's so many things, peace, provision, vision, you know, guidance, direction, you know, love, all of these things. And so if there's anything I would want to do is to encourage you and to spur you on to love and good deeds, to consider others in addition to yourself, to see yourself in the midst of the story. Because like Access Alive said yesterday, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. You just might not see the full picture. And that's really what's available to you. And Steve is saying, hey, you got interest? Ask him yourself. Dang it. Take care of yourself and each other, and we will catch you next time. Have a great weekend, and don't mess with Texas. I mean, why would you want to? Take care, everybody.